Hello everyone, it's Arts Up Writing Tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to describe diagrams in Arts Academic Writing Task 1. There is a variety of diagrams you can get in your writing. And although diagrams are not very common, they still do appear in writing, and you can easily get one for a task 1. So it is a good idea to learn how to describe a diagram. In this lesson, we're going to see an example of a diagram question, learn a band 9 answer structure, go through each stage of describing a diagram together, then learn useful vocabulary and produce a band 9 answer. And here is how writing task 1 question with a diagram may look like. You've got a question card that gives you some basic information about your diagram. And you've got the diagram, which you should describe in your own words. Let's take a closer look at our question card. It says, The diagram illustrates how steel roads are manufactured in the furniture industry. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Now let's examine our diagram. In this case, it's a process diagram. It shows the process of manufacturing of metal roads. Each process consists of several stages. The first thing you need to do is to find the beginning and the end of the process. In our case, we start from the raw material and end with inspection. You can see that this diagram has a lot of additional information. This information is provided for almost every stage of your process. But we don't need it for now, we'll focus on it later. Some diagrams may be not as straightforward as this one, so sometimes you may need to ask yourself more questions about the diagram. For example, is the process cyclic? Are there any loops or repeating stages? Maybe there are some things happening at the same time? Anyway, when you have familiarized yourself with the diagram, it's time to start writing the answer. And here is the band 9 answer structure that we described in the previous lesson. You can see a link for the lesson on the right. In any case, if you are answering else writing task 1 question, you can get a band 9 for your answer by following this ideal answer structure. Your first paragraph is an introduction. You should introduce your graph to the readers there. Your second paragraph is an overview. There, you should describe some general features of your diagram. After writing the overview, you should describe specific features of the diagram, each in a separate paragraph. Never ever write conclusions or a personal opinion in writing task 1. Your task is to describe the given data, not to give your opinion. Well, enough generalities, let's start writing our band 9 answer. The first paragraph you need to write is your introduction. For the introduction, you need to paraphrase the topic in your own words. So, instead of writing the diagram illustrates how steel rods are manufactured in the furniture industry. You need to write a paraphrased version of that sentence. Here is how I wrote it. The diagram explains the way in which steel rods are produced for the furniture industry. As you see, I did not change the word diagram. Because diagram is a diagram. It's not a line graph. It's not a bar chart. It's not a table. So there is no sense in paraphrasing the word diagram. After that comes the verb, and it can always be paraphrased. So it's a very, very good technique to paraphrase the verb. I used explains instead of illustrates. You could also write shows or describes. These verbs are very good for describing a diagram. Next. I change the phrase how steel roads are manufactured to the way in which steel roads are produced. So instead of writing how, I wrote the way in which, and instead of writing manufactured, I wrote produced. And then comes furniture industry, and I kept it the same. 
So that's all with our introduction. We have paraphrased the topic so the examiner can get familiar with our diagram. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. And our next paragraph is a general overview. This is a very important paragraph. To achieve a band 6 or more for a task 1, you must provide the overview. In the overview paragraph, you describe general features of your diagram. But like line graphs, pie charts and bar charts, process diagrams have no general trends or key changes to identify. That's why, while giving the overview of your diagram, you should write, first of all, the number of stages, as you can see in this process we have 11 stages, and how the process begins and ends. If the diagram has loops or repeated stages, or the process is cyclic, you may also want to comment on that. In our case, the general overview looks like this. Overall, the process consists of 11 stages, beginning with the raw material and ending up with the product's inspection. As you see, the diagram's overview is quite short, only one sentence, and your overview should not be long too. One or two sentences is an ideal. My first word for the overview is overall. Always start your overview with the word overall. It indicates the examiner that you are going to describe general trends. Then, I gave the number of stages. I used phrase the process consists of 11 stages to do that. And I also wrote how our process begins and ends. For this, I used phrases beginning with and ending up with. So, this is how you should structure an overview. Overall, the process consists of X stages, beginning with something and ending up with something. Well, that's all with our overview and we move on to the next paragraph. Once we have finished the overview, we should provide specific features in our next few paragraphs. When we are describing graphs, charts or tables, we describe all the changes of numbers and percentages in the paragraphs with specific features. But now we have a different case. Now we are dealing with a diagram, so we should describe each stage of our process in detail. And we should use all those additional information and hints that accompany most stages of our process. You may wonder how to divide data into paragraphs while describing a diagram. Well, unlike graphs, charts and tables, diagrams have no general rules for grouping data. In fact, you can describe the specific features of your diagram in one, two or three paragraphs, grouping the information into paragraphs the way you prefer. But remember that you should describe the stages of your process sequentially. That is to say, it's a bad idea to start with the last stage, then write about the third stage, then describe the first stage, and so on. Your information must come in a logical way. Now let's see how I wrote the specific features. I decided to divide the specific features into three paragraphs, so that the first paragraph writes about the first four stages of our process. The second paragraph writes about the next four stages. And the last paragraph writes about the last three stages. Now, I will explain you how to describe each stage of our process. Let's take a closer look at the first four stages. What does the diagram show? We can see that the first stage is called raw material. The picture shows a box with some raw material and an arrow, indicating that iron ore, yellow ore and carbon line that box. This material will experience some transformations throughout the process and will become a steel road. I describe the stage in such a way. First of all, iron ore, yellow ore and carbon are collected to serve as a raw material for steel roads manufacturing. Then we move on to the next stage which is called melt. If you don't know what does melt mean, it's totally okay. Diagrams often picture information with quite unusual names that may be unfamiliar to you. But you should not worry about that. Your task 
is to focus on the description, using all those strange names and additional information. We can see that the picture illustrates a container with a white hot metal. One arrow points to the container, saying, Raw material is in the melting slit. The other arrow indicates the temperature range. I used all this information to describe this stage of the process. After that, the raw material is melted in a melting slit, where it is heated to a temperature in range of 1300-1500 degrees Celsius. The third stage is called refinement, and from the diagram we only know that during this stage the material is put into a container that is called a smelting cabin. We don't know what exactly happens in that smelting cabin, and that's where a verb undergo comes in handy. To undergo means to experience. For instance, you can say the material undergoes refinement in a smelting cabin. And this is a very good way to explain a stage that lacks additional information. Here's how I described this stage. The melted mass is then transferred to a smelting cabin to undergo refinement. Then comes the fourth stage. It's called ingot pour. The picture shows a pouring machine that pours some material into containers. And a short explanation says, condensed metal is poured into ingots. Using this information, I wrote such sentence. Next, the condensed metal is put in a pouring machine and poured into ingots. And that's all with our first paragraph for specific features. I hope that now you get an idea of how to describe the process stage by stage. So let's move on to the second paragraph that describes the next four stages. Here's how I wrote it. In the next stage, the ingots are connected to a cooling reservoir where the temperature falls to 60-100 degrees Celsius. Metal goes through special nozzles and cools down, forming strands. Following this, the metal strands proceed to rollers that change their shape. Next, the products are put into a heating machine, where they undergo heat treatment. Subsequently, a measuring automaton completes a surface check of the products. As you see, I describe the stages of the process sequentially, using all the information provided by our diagram. And now, only the last three stages are left for our third paragraph. This is how I describe them. After that, the metal rods are sized by special cutters and get ID stamping. Finally, the products undergo inspection and are ready for use. Congratulations! We have described all 11 stages of our process. And that's all with our special features. You can take a look at the three paragraphs of special features on the right. You can see that I used a lot of time connectors while describing the process. In fact, process is a series of changes that happen over time. That's why time connectors are extremely important for writing about process diagrams. To start describing the first stage, I used connector first of all. You could also use such connectors as firstly and to begin to start your description. To move on to the next stage, I use the following connectors. After that, then, next, in the next stage, following this, and subsequently. And to describe the last stage, I used connector finally. It's a very, very good idea to use these time connectors if you're describing a process. This way your writing will be more coherent and you will achieve a higher score. We have finished this writing task together. Now you know how to describe diagrams in IELTS writing task 1. This piece of writing that we've produced would achieve a band 9 on a real IELTS test. If you wish to see this lesson in a text form and complete some useful exercises, follow the link on the top. If you wish to check out other cool writing lessons, click on the second link. It was a great pleasure to go through this lesson with you. 
I wish you good luck and see you soon in another Alza lesson.